So this video is to show using fleece or minky. What is a successful way to quilt with it and not make a mess in your quilt room? This came from Walmart. So this is a nice cheap backing and I'm going to take it apart here. And, and the first thing you want to do is identify the cut edge to it. So the salvage will be fine, but I want to know where is that cut edge? Cause that's where, that's where the little fuzzies are. Okay. And look, we can see it right now. So here I have a little vacuum cleaner with the hose unattached. Okay. I unattach the hose. And so the first thing I'm going to start doing is I'm going to turn it on here. Okay, so you get the idea. I won't take the time to keep doing it. But this way, all of this mess ends up quickly in your vacuum cleaner. So you just make sure that you get all of that edge. And then you do the same for this edge. And then you still will need to square it up. So because I haven't finished doing this, I probably am going to make a mess. But, but if I were just here by myself, I would definitely take care of both cut ends and, and vacuum the edge. And then what I would do is what you would normally do is, um, and, and in fact, you may want to go ahead um, while you're, while you're um, let's see, I probably shouldn't use this. It'll probably come out, but, but you may want to go ahead and do something that lets you know what is the right side. Okay. So you probably want to use a safety pin instead of a straight pin, but do that. And, and then you're going to treat it, um, so this is the selvage. So see, there's no fuzzies coming from it. <clears throat> this is the other edge that still needs vacuuming. But um, but but make sure, you know, do, do the whole test like you would a normal backing. And just make sure that it's that it's cut on the straight. And and then when you when you um, get it shaken out so that you know that it's hanging straight. Then if you need to trim it down the side to get it straight, because you're doing like this. and um, So when you get ready to cut, and see, obviously, this one needs a little cutting. But every time you cut, so you're going to you're gonna have it, you know, the, uh, the fold, you'll have it lined up with the line on your cutting mat. And then you're going to lay this and, and start cutting. Well, every time you cut, pull this out and immediately do some more vacuuming. So, so cut, vacuum, and then do that, and cut, and vacuum. And then when you do that, all these little fuzzies get taken care of, and, and you don't have any more of those, okay? So then you want to identify the center of the edge that you're going to put on the rails. So... If, if you are going to, and it doesn't matter if it's the stretchy or the straight. I know there's a lot of discussions about which way to load the stretchy, and I've done it both ways. And either way, either way will work. Either way will work. So if, if I were going to load this, this edge, then I'm going to um, get the center and I'm going to mark it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and um, just kind of doing this, I'm doing this kind of quick and rough, but you'll get the idea. So if I'm doing this, then I'm going to say, okay, this is the center. So now there's something I want to do at this point with it just laying, sorry, <laughs> with this just laying here, um, not, not stretched out because as soon as you start pulling at it or anything, just with it just nicely laying um, flat and everything and not pulled, I want to measure from this center what is what is this amount. So if I lay it right there, okay, and then I go out to here, and it's saying 32, okay? Because you really can't go by the measurements. That that's one thing I've learned. You really can't go by by measurements that are that are on the bolt or the the 
like the this you 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 can't you can't trust that you can't trust that so do measure and now you know what what half of it is without it being stretched or anything so we can see okay so we had 32 so then you're going to come over here to your rails and like if this is the the center um or not necessarily the center if this is, say, the spot on your leader that you're attaching the center to, okay, you're going to measure from here out to whatever you just measured for the half amount, okay? So measure there. And then, so you're going to put the center of the edge you're attaching right there, and then you're going to put the right edge there, and then just kind of work it in, um, attaching it between those two, and then, and then same the other direction. You're going to measure out whatever that, that half amount was and then attach the other corner there and then just fill it in, working it in. And it's especially important to do that when the stretchy edge is being attached. The one that's currently loaded is that same stuff and it's very, very stretchy stuff. Um, but the... The non-stretchy edge was was loaded, but and so the stretch is going across. And this, but look, it's it's just stretchy both ways. Seriously, so um, but but that's your way to to make sure you're not stretching out the ends, and then do the same on the other end, um, wherever your center mark is, the, or the mark that you're going. Um, going to attach the center of, of the other end to measure out the same amount you measured up here and the other way and attach the other corners there so that so that you're attaching it um, equally and 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 I just can't say how important that is when the stretch is going across when the stretchy edge is being attached you must have that that measurement this is being edited in. It was something I forgot to mention when I was making all the rest of this video. So this is being added in as an afterthought, but I need to add this in. So most Minky has a nap, meaning you can pet it and it smooths down. And then if you pet it the other way, it roughs up, okay? So if I were going to load this Minky, I can see that this pets the Minky down. So when I load it, I would load it so that the petted down is going this way. I hope that made sense. So with this being petted down, it would be loaded with with it facing down like that. So as it rolls, it 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 rolls with it instead of against it. So make make sure you pet pet your pet your minky and and uh, and have it loaded the right way. Now if it's going to be across, then I don't even worry about it. But but if 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 the nap is going this way, then I, I, I pet it and make sure the petting down is is going with the roll of the rails. Okay, so then when it comes to advancing it, so you can see that um, this this is not pulled tight, okay? I don't know how much Doug can get under there with the camera, but you can see it's it's um it's definitely floppy okay so that's how you want it you don't want it just super bagging down but you definitely want it you know nice nice and floppy there okay and so then as you advance it that's how you're going to be advancing it uh not cranking it ever but just kind of leaving it loosey-goosey and and then you'll be fine regard like i said regardless of of which way you you attach it to the rails whether it's stretchy across or stretchy up and down um I, i've done equally fine both ways i don't i don't see any problem with it and then you'll treat the top like you always do you'll you'll do your basting and 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 it's it's really hard to tell how the stitches are on the underside so what i do is i i do my test stitches on what i call normal fabric i'll just i'll just set this up down at the end and and i'll make sure it looks good on normal fabric and then i will do some some little test stitches on a scrap right there on the edge but but when you flip it over 
if you don't see anything, you're probably fine because the stitches sink right into this kind of stuff and you can barely see them. And as far as needing to raise the hopping foot, like right now, there is there is no drag, okay? So the hopping foot is going to stay the same height above as if I were doing what I would call a, a normal quilt, say. Just normal backing, batting, quilt top of cotton. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not adjusting that hopping foot any. It's, it's staying. Now, and, and this is just normal quarter-inch batting right there. So... As long as I'm not feeling any drag, I'm fine. I'm leaving that hopping foot right where it is. So I hope that takes a little bit of mystery out of, of quilting with Minky. Do not be scared of it. Do not think, oh, when I get better, I'll use it. I almost think a beginner should use it because of how much it hides the, the um, stitches on the backside. You seriously just about can't see them. It's amazing. Um, but, but yeah, there's, there's, it's just so easy. And some people will say to choose a design that's, that's very loose. I, I think you can probably use a lot of designs that aren't necessarily just big and loose. I've, I asked to see on uh, one of the Facebook pages, I asked to see some, some quilting designs that people had used and there were plenty that used ones that were more dense than what I would have thought to use and they look just fine. So so don't don't um, paint yourself into a corner with Minky. Go ahead and use it and fall in love with it. And the fleece, the Lux fleece from Joann's, oh, that just quilts so nice, so nice. So uh, I hope that's, that's helped. And, and certainly if you, <clears throat> if you do a search on, on quilting with Minky and, and what to do about all the fuzzies, you, you'll see other options like putting down tape and then cutting on the tape. But, but what I found with what I showed you with, um, with just using, using the vacuum cleaner to, to suck up the edges, it works just fine. Like right now, um, Doug can show you on the frame. Do you see a bunch of, of, um, of black fuzzies? You don't. You don't. There's none. So if you're vacuuming, if you're vacuuming the edge good, that takes them. That takes them all and you don't have them getting all over your, your frame and your quilt area. And, you know, you may need to vacuum up around your floor, around your cutting table, but, um, but that'll be it. So, um, I hope that you will... Sooner rather than later, try Minky out if you haven't already.